where you are. Here I am in my new set. What do you think? I called the uh, crew in. I said, guys, we're done with that gray wall. Give me some springtime flowers. And here we have it. It's not green screen. These are actual Arizona flora. So I'm really excited to be out here in a completely different place. Well, it's not actually that different of a place. It's just a different part of the house, but it looks different. So um, happy Friday. Today is April 3rd, and we are going to have a drawing party with all of you and me. And hopefully you're bringing in friends. Hopefully you're saying to people, you've got to join this live drawing party every day. It's the most phenomenal piece of entertainment on the internet or elsewhere. Or at least a good way to kill 45 minutes. Um, so yeah, today is uh, it's another nice day. Every day, the mercury has been inching up one or two degrees, almost as if to say it hasn't really changed. But it has. Each day it gets a little tiny bit warmer, a little bit closer to summer. And what could be better? Um, of course, summer in Phoenix, which is where I am now, is, um, is insane. It is insanely hot here. But it is absolutely beautiful here in the springtime. So I'm enjoying that. I hope that you're enjoying wherever you are, even if it is raining, snowing, Whatever it is, hopefully you're finding a way to, to enjoy the day. I see that there's a lot of folks here from various places, like Christine, who's in Monmouth, Oregon. I'm not sure where in Oregon that is or what the weather is like there, but hopefully it is pleasant. Thistle is back. That is nice to see you back here. I'm not sure where you were. Did you go somewhere? Unlikely, but you're back today at least. Pegrit in Southwest Florida. I must say I like that name, Pegrit, P E D. G-R-E-T. It sounds like something from Harry Potter or the like. Uh, who else? Um, Rebecca and Holly and Karen and Anna and Charmaine and Luz and Linda and Esther and so forth. So lots of folks. Catherine from Wisconsin. And uh, there are people apparently in other parts of YouTube as per usual. This is part of the quest, you know, the quest to find your way to the right channel. Yes, yet another thing we're working on. But anyway, um, hopefully, uh, ooh, somebody here is grumpy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Suramoga is in Barcelona. That's great. Speaking to my friend Lapin in Barcelona on Monday. And I'm going to be speaking to my pal Felix Scheinberger uh, later today, which I'm looking forward to. So it's just nice to reach out every day, try and find a person or two. Yesterday, I spoke to uh, Onmar Wynn, who is in England. And um, and also I spoke again with France because we are working on some projects together. So, um, yeah, lots of lots of reasons to talk to friends, to collaborate, but also just for the heck of it, see how they're doing. So far, everybody is is doing OK. Everybody's healthy. And, uh, you know, my friends tend to be artists and illustrators who spend their whole time in quarantine most of the time anyway. But um that's good. It's keeping them healthy and safe. And that's nice. Um, what else? Uh, well, what I wanted to talk about today was, well, there are a few things I want to talk about today, but I want to show something to you, which you may well have seen because everybody's seen everything on the internet. But um, Jenny, my wife, shared this with us yesterday. Um, here, let me go over and see if I can bring it up to you. So this is uh, an article in Design Boom about this thing that Getty, the Getty Museum in Los Angeles tweeted out, which is, the, um, they said, we challenge you to recreate a work of art with objects and people in your home. One, choose your favorite artwork. Two, find three things lying around your house. And three, recreate the artwork with those items. Really cool. And look at some of these examples. So people share both the original inspiration and their recreation of it. Some of them are just brilliant and <laughs> hilarious. Um, that is very, very creative and clever. Perfect. Perfect. 
another another creative one of uh, this painting of ancient Rome made out of <laughs> the Simpsons and uh, yeah again some of them are very specific and some of them are just very creative like that I mean yep we've all been there so maybe we have to do some of these what do you think my first thought was oh i'll do my favorite painting which is van gogh's painting of his shoes and jenny said no that's not nearly creative enough look at how great these other things other people are doing so yeah that's really great brilliant so clever so yeah i think we should have to try our hands at these i mean that's just i don't know it's, it's hard to hard to know where they began with these things did they begin with a photo or did they look for a photo no they must have just said that's a cool photo let me figure that out so anyway i think that's really great so um if you do do that let me know because i would love to see it it seems just so clever and creative but today we're going to do something, um, you know, that I think is one of my favorite types of drawings, which is the selfie. You know, groans from the audience, please. We're going to draw self-portraits today. And I think that it is an important thing to do for a score of reasons. And let me enumerate at least half a score. So... First of all, practicality. You have a model available to you all the time. Right there. There you are, ready to pose. You don't have to ask your housemate. You don't have to go and Google or go to Sketchy and look for a photo of somebody. You're there. You're available. You're patient. You'll show up again and again and again if you need to do corrections and revisions. So. You're, you know, the ideal subject from that regard, practicality. Now, but I think there's way more important reasons to focus on self-portraits. And, and another one of them is that it's a record of who you are at this moment, right? And that's an ever-changing thing. Sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're sad, sometimes you're fat, sometimes you're scrawny, sometimes you're disheveled, and sometimes you're perruqued. Anyway, um, so, you know, you have these different forms, and they, sometimes your exterior reflects your interior, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you look great and feel like, feel lousy, and vice versa. But, you know, I think capturing yourself on a regular basis. So don't do one perfect self-portrait taken from a corporate headshot, although I've done that. But, you know, do lots of them. Do lots of them and make it a regular habit because then you will have a record of the ways in which you looked, your hairstyles, your outfits, your wrinkles, your facial hair, among the men, you know. Um, but also you'll... You know, you'll you'll have this record of these of the, the exterior feelings that you have, appearance you have, but also how you feel it will still come out. And it will come out because of another good reason for doing self portraits, which is not only does your exterior change every day, your interior does too. So the artist who is doing the portrait feels different, um, has a different attention span has a different attitude towards the subject, right? Um, different materials, if you want, uh, different angles, different lighting. There's just so many variations, but those variations can express how you feel. And, and if you're changing as a person, if you're, if you're feeling angry at yourself, it's gonna come out in the drawing. If you're feeling sorry for yourself, it's gonna come out in the drawing. If you're feeling proud of yourself, happy about the world, whatever it is, you're drawing, and I don't mean that you're drawing yourself with some giant rictus grin or you're painting yourself with, you know, pink with unicorns dancing on your shoulders, although you could do that, thistle. But, you know, it's, it's 
going to come out anyway, even if you draw yourself in the most straightforward fashion. Now, I see already some people have um, had some reservations about this. I don't look good, being a lot of <laughs> an Ellie. I need a haircut. Holly, some of us maybe haven't combed their hair. It's going to be messy. Uh, others think it might be too difficult. Um, but let's try and make it fun, and let's try and make it simple. Now, let's also think about the way we want to approach it. Maybe to kind of kick you off, I will show you. I've been drawing them, you know, uh, last few days. I'll show you the last few days worth that I've been doing. Um, I've done gazillions of them, but I'm I'm, I'm going to be drawing on my iPad because that's really when I really want to make my own personal art these days. That's generally where I'm going. So Alex, yes, you're showing up late to class. And yes, we are drawing self-portraits. Next time, please try and show up on time or bring a note from your mother. If your mother can fax one through to you. Um, Giselle only does selfies for the sake of drawing. Well, what more? What more important reason could there be? Jan cut her own hair. Brave woman. You know, I have. I need teams of highly skilled barbers to work on this particular uh, head. But Holly has the right attitude. We can do this. It'll be great. We can, and it will be. All right. Let's have a look at some of the stuff that I've been doing. Tell me what you think. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is me sort of – maybe I need to recreate some of my drawings in photographs like that Getty thing. Um, yeah. I don't know what I don't know what I was thinking here, kind of like I've been scribbled upon and I'm trying to be good. Yeah. Proud of myself, but looking lumpy. The background of this is actually um close-up of uh, Monet's sunset that I took in Paris last summer. Just used it as a bit of texture. And the the kind of horribly sort of elephant man disease looking skin is uh, from a, I think it's from a bathroom wall that I took in Amsterdam. This is... Uh, this is a photograph, actually, of um, my brother and sister-in-law's uh, dining room table. It's an old work table in their kitchen. I, if, uh, this is how I, I felt yesterday. Um, I felt sort of, you know, just a little scratched up, a little weather-beaten, sitting out in the sun, trying to shield myself from the rays, but nonetheless getting a little... A little um, little uh, scratchy and mosquito bitten. Oh, God. These mosquitoes have been ravishing us. Ravaging. Not ravaging. Well, maybe ravishing too. But, yeah. So, all right. So, as you can see from these, it doesn't... I'm not drawing, like, uh, super photographic ones. I mean, I do those sometimes, but I'm just interested in kind of capturing how I feel. So, feel free to do that, you know. Um, feel free to... to, to Capture the general feeling of yourself. You may or may not be working on the iPad. It doesn't really matter. Um, but let's just, you know, I have a few others. Let me see if I have another stack somewhere here of selfies um, that I could share with you. Yeah. Just to show you the range of different things that I've been doing. You know, always compliment the subject. You know, if you want a cooperative, a cooperative model. Danielle Goldfader, may I suggest that you take a course to learn how to use it? I know. How about 
be an iPad artist at Sketchbook School. Our sponsor today is a very murky one. Yes, it's a course that I teach on how to draw on the iPad. And that, that kind of captures how I'm feeling these days too. Is it vanity? I don't think so. It's certainly not flattery. This is drawn, I think, on a photograph, actually. But uh, it doesn't really look like me, strangely. So, all right, that's enough of that. Let's get on with it. Let us... Let's do a drawing. So, all right. Let's do this, people. So, look, if you have a mirror, great. If you have a phone, you want to just turn it on and look at yourself, great. Or if you want to just wing it, that's, that's probably what I'm going to do. I just, I just need to rearrange here so that I can have a little bit of... Make it a bit more comfortable to draw. Um, so yeah, Katrina, I thank thank you for noticing that. Katrina says the range of styles is so beautiful and interesting. How they're all yours, even though different. That's true. So that, I mean, I think that is what I like about them too, is that there's no one way of doing this, and that as I said earlier, it's like how you feel comes out, even if you didn't intend it. You know, I might not say, "Oh, I feel wonderful today. Let me paint with bright colors and." And, uh, you know, some, but uh, whatever it is, however you're feeling, it's going to come out. So part of the process of doing this is to learn about yourself. Like, how are you today? How are you? And I don't know. I know about you, but that seems like a really important question today. And all the time these days. You know, how are you? Um, how are you feeling? How are you doing? Hold on, I'm gonna have to. I suddenly realized that my. Oh no, there it is. Okay. Um, you know how. And are you asking yourself that question enough? Do you know what I mean? That we're um, we ourselves are and our bodies are undergoing something pretty enormous and. Um, I think that that's an important thing to ask ourselves almost as if we weren't ourselves, as if we were somebody else, you know, asking us, how, how are you? How do you feel? How are you doing? Is there anything I can do for you? Um, because I think, you know, we might, we might not notice if we didn't ask that question, and we might leave ourselves open to a different kind of harm than the obvious one. And the obvious one is something we're reminded of constantly, but the harm we might do to ourselves is just you know, missing, missing something, neglecting ourselves, being unfair to ourselves. I'm really of the mind right now that it's important to try and be gentle with ourselves and with other people. You know, it's, um, it's easy to be frustrated and stressed out, but to give ourselves a break, I think, too. This whole notion of self-care is, uh, 
it's a little sort of new agey and not exactly what I normally like to sort of think about too much. So, or what does that mean? Manicures, pedicures, collagen injections, yoga retreats, maybe. Maybe it just means paying attention, giving yourself a break, saying to yourself, you know what, I know I suck in this and that way, but can we just wait on that? Can we wait on fixing that and just um, deal with the present for now? And... Uh, Give it a rest, Mr. Monkey. The monkey is that voice in your head, that inner critic that has always got something useful to say. Um, but it really needs to take a break right now, I think. Because right now, it's not about necessarily being our very best selves. I think it's more about surviving so that we can fix ourselves later on if we have to. And the same for the people around us. And that can be difficult when, you know, we are worried. We're worried for other people. We're, we're stressed out by all these changes and things that are going on. But there's a time and a place, I think. See, I really have no plan for this particular drawing, but it's starting to get a, it's starting to say something to me, sort of deer in the headlights weird look that it's getting. Hmm. Yeah, so as I said, you learn something about what's going on when you, when you look at, when you start to do this kind of a drawing. And that's, that's why I think it's important to do them a lot because they become a diary. And, uh, you know, again, it doesn't need to look like you. It just needs to feel like you. Okay, um, so th what I'm doing now is I'm looking through this, I have this whole folder of, of photos that I've taken of that are just um, just textures, like I'll just stop in the street and just take a picture of something or other, and I'll just say, um, you know, maybe that's kind of a cool texture, and maybe I'll use it for something one day. So I just take it and uh, put it there, and then... See how it looks. Hmm, that's kind of disturbing, isn't it? I don't know if I like this. <laughs> okay, maybe that's what it is. That's the way. That's where we're going, folks. That is where we're going. Not what I thought was going to happen, but. Sort of feels right now. Let's see if this is a different. Uh... 
Let's make that a little saturated. Okay. Uh, all right. That's where I'm going with this. I feel a little <laughs> bad that this is what my band ended up. But. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to think whether I'm living up to this piece of advice I just gave you. Am I actually looking after myself particularly well? Um, maybe. I mean, I think I think I could do a better job, frankly. I think I could because I'm not... I'm not I mean, I'm trying to sort of get some exercise every day, which is not bad. And I'm trying to eat reasonably well, which I'm not doing an amazing job at either. And I'm trying to get decent sleep, which I'm sort of doing, but not really. But I think the main thing that I am doing, which is not characteristic of me, is letting it go. Letting certain things go and just saying, um, let's... Again, like I said before, let's just like put it on hold for now. Whatever, whatever this thing, what's the seemingly enormously difficult thing is, enormously important thing is, you know. And I think another thing is, and, and I, I talked about this before yesterday. I think this um, idea that we have that because we have a lot of, seem to have a lot of spare time, that we can um, beat ourselves up for not using it adequately, and um, you know, is that right or fair to ourselves? I'm, I'm really guilty of that because I always feel like I'm not doing enough. And um, so suddenly having all this opportunity to, to, you know, fill the day. What a great opportunity to, you know, alphabetize my underwear and... write seven books and I've been asked to do a few things and I immediately agree to all of them. Like, absolutely. I must do this. So this one guy asked me to write a section of a book. And then I had a couple articles that I was asked to do. And then there's also a lot of sketchbook school things to do. And I'm all, I'm all, I'm all in always all in. And, uh, you know, but maybe that's not the only thing I should be doing. So, um, how will we look back on this? And because we are going to look back on it, it's not going to be long in the scheme, in the larger scheme of life. It's not going to be long till we look back on this. And when we look back on it, what are we going to say about ourselves? You know, are we going to say, oh, I was completely freaked out for like two months and then I just went back to my life exactly the way it was before. And man, that was, that was a messed up time. But, you know, anyway, I got a promotion and uh, yada, yada. Or are we going to look at it as, um, as a time to maybe change in some way, right? Crisis, they say, is opportunity. So what is that opportunity? And are you availing yourself of it? Am I? Or am I just sitting here telling you to? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's that's the question is, as grown-ups, um, we've kind of hopefully gone a little bit beyond that super freak-out stage that we had the first week or two. And now we're saying to ourselves, well, um, What does this mean to me in my life? How am I going to merge differently from this uh, after we're done? And, uh, you know, I mean, I think about, I think about, 
I think about this experience we're having right now here, drawing together, talking together. And I think for years I wrote a blog. Um, for 15 years I wrote a blog. And a lot of it I wrote first thing in the morning. And I would sit down and I would write to some person out there. It was basically me. I would write to some version of me and I would say, um, you know, here's what I'm experiencing, thinking about. Here's some advice I might give to you, really, to me. Um, and I did that for a, a long time. And and I didn't really know who I was doing it for. I didn't know who the people were who were looking at it. Um, but maybe you, you were one of them. And... It was a little abstract. It wasn't in the sense that it was, I didn't know who it was I was talking to. But now I know that I'm talking to you and I know your name and I know that you're actually physically there right now as I'm doing this. Um, whether now or when you're watching a recording of this or whatever the hell it is but you're an actual person. And um, so in some ways it's given it more dimension for me. And it's also reminded me that there was this thing that I was doing that I, that I had stopped doing, um, but actually it's, it's kind of, it's sort of an important thing for me. And I need to think about that and see how that part of my purpose can return. So, yeah. So thank you for, Kind of moving me to that point, yeah, if you, you know, by just being here and showing up. So yeah, I mean, Karen says, let me show what Karen just said because I think that was interesting. Um, a personal crisis helped me recognize an open door years ago. It put me on a much more enriching path. I hope this crisis will do that on a larger societal scale. I completely understand where you are, what you're saying, because I have gone through. Similar things and um, definitely has changed me. And I think in some ways made me uh, more aware, more aware perhaps of what matters. And um, that's a good thing because you know, I think we want to want to be aware and empathetic also to other people and what they're going through. Um, There it is, the glow of revelation emerging from the cracked facade of an aging. Yes, maybe. Maybe that's what this is about. I don't know. <laughs> um, let's see. I want to add something else. What do you think? Two on the nose? what we can do to make it a little subtler. It can happen sometimes when you're doing a drawing and you're like, oh, let me try this. And suddenly you're like, oh no, what did I just do? Fortunately, the iPad is all forgiving and you can just say, uh, yeah, let's not do that. Yeah, let's not do that. Let's find something else. Mm, those flowers behind me are starting to smell really good, though. I gotta say, it is quite pleasant sitting here. Oh, yeah, look at this coffee mug, apropos. I pulled it out of my sister in law's closet or covered this morning without even realizing it. What it was, life isn't about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. That's what we're doing, we're creating ourselves. I mean, we're writing, we're drawing, we're drawing ourselves. <laughs> Maybe that's good enough.
Interesting. Kind of like that. So yeah. That's it. That's me today. That was interesting. I, I, I didn't think that that's what was going to happen, but it did. So, Robin had a bit of a revelation. That's good. It is very dark. And I really didn't, I mean, it's funny because I actually don't feel dark, but I, 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 I kind of was like feeling like the, the things are pretty good. And then that, so you never know. Maybe I'll draw something really cheery tomorrow. We'll see. Um, so yeah, that's what, that's the way it is. Let's see what else. Um, Doris asks if there are any care workers in here. Um, that's, you know, I think it's amazing how, you know, people have used um, healthcare workers as a focus of uh, thanks. And I think that's amazing. I've seen lots of sort of people doing little virtual parades and flashing their lights and doing all kinds of nice things for people. Our, the woman who lives next door to us actually is an ER nurse and she actually was sick. She's the only person who we know about in Phoenix who was sick. She immediately sequestered herself. This is several weeks ago. And she got better and she's fine. But that was like the first kind of, ooh, it's right here. Um, but she's okay. And she's back at work. And she's, that's amazing. Um, and yeah, that was kind of brought it home, as it were, having her right there and having her go through that. But um, it's great that she did, that she recovered, of course. Um, so yeah, Krista says, I didn't know that I'd feel so bad. Yeah. I don't know. Do, maybe I don't. Is it bad or is it emerging from the cracks? Or I don't know. I'm not an art, an art critic or an art historian, I can't say. Um, Michelle, the teacher of juvenile delinquents, and I'm teaching at the only school open in the county. Wow. That must be very, very challenging. And I'm sure difficult to um, to manage for yourself and also doing what you have to do for troubled kids. I, I think that that's fantastic. But I think it's also fantastic that you're taking some time to make art for yourself. And I'm not sure if you can share art with them, whether making art um, with these uh, young people can be helpful to them. I, I think that it's extremely important that, that um, they still have, they're still in touch with their creativity in a way that adults are not, and it might be an opportunity. So, um, yeah. So, um, Giselle, I'm very sorry to hear about your friend. We have uh, quite a few friends who have been sick. Um, most of them, it seems, are on the mend. There's also a lot of uh, people who's creative people who I admire who have succumbed to this and a few have passed away. But I'm not going to talk about that right now. Um, I think instead, oh, Michelle is the art teacher. Okay, well, that's good. I imagine that that's a very important thing to do right now. Um, grocery store workers, it's true. Delivery people, um, all kinds of people who are doing valiant things, but um, today is about thinking about you too. So I want you to, to take this time for yourself, you know, try and see if you can make this into a little bit of habit. Try and do it at least, I don't know, once a week. Are you journaling? Are you actually, like, I'm not, I was thinking about this this morning. I thought I just haven't been writing a journal, which I use, which I've done on and off through most of my life. I have not been writing about this. You know, I remember I didn't do it during 9-11. I didn't do it um, for a long time after um, my first wife's accident. Or I did after she passed away. I did do a lot of journaling then, though. So um, writing 
how you're feeling. I think if nothing else, I mean, it, it gives you perspective in the present and it'll obviously be something very interesting to you in the future when you look back on it. I haven't been doing it. I have these pictures that I've been making. That's kind of it. So maybe that's, maybe that's all you can manage to do right now too. Um, but I think by and large, just, I mean, the things that are helping me are having structure, having this meeting with you this morning, uh, morning my time, knowing that I have this to start my day with, um, getting some exercise, um, spending the evening with my family here, playing cards and talking a couple nights ago yeah, like we got into like a really wild almost argument about whether the tiger king was actually a documentary i don't know if you've seen this frankly repulsive series on netflix about repulsive people but um my brother-in-law was convinced that he said he said i don't know what i was watching was that a documentary i don't know what that was so we had this long argument that got really heated about what a documentary is and i think I thought about it later on i was like what the hell we're fighting about what a documentary is but it's not of course we were sublimating and transferring our general feelings of claustrophobia into this stupid subject we've all been getting along really well i have to say i mean we've been together for three weeks now you know and uh even though we're family we're we're not used to spending this much time together but it's gone i think everybody has been really great and it's been going well so but i can only imagine there are situations where people are like this and are having a much harder time um Ande says, I'm journaling, da- journaling journaling, daily in art journal and, and a diary. Presumably, I've been doing that for over 50 years. I have a shelf of all my books. I can look back on anything. Sometimes it's helpful for me to remember exactly how something was in my own words. Absolutely. I have, I have illustrated journals like that galore, and it's so nice to be able to go back and look at them. Um, Marilyn says, on April 1st, I started a daily record of the events of the day. I'll call it the Corona Chronicles. It's quick in drawings with some color. And good. Are you also writing stuff next to it? That would be interesting to write a few words next to it hard. Um, so, yeah. All right, good. Well, another thing that's also been important to me is to have the weekend feel different from the week. It just helps to need to know what day it is, to know how much time is passing, to have, again, a bit more structure, a bit more control in, in these times. So um, so I won't see you tomorrow or Sunday, but I will see you on Monday. And we will do some more of this. If you do a drawing today, um, uh, if you do a self-portrait that you would like to share, hashtag SBS Drawing Party. Um, oh, I, ne- I never played the little video I was going to play of me doing the self-portrait. Well, maybe we'll do this again. Honestly, I think I might want to do this next week again, someday, do a self-portrait. I think it would be a great thing to continue to do and to do that on a regular basis. Um, so, uh, but if you do something and you want to tag it, hash- hashtag SBS Drawing Party, then I could see it. Or if you want to share it in the uh, schoolyard, if you're a member of the that part of the Sketchbook School community. If you want to know a bit more about drawing selfies, uh, we have a class called People Drawing People, which has a whole week devoted to drawing self-portraits, taught by seven different artists. It's a lot of fun. And uh, it is uh, available right now. You can go and sign up for it at sketchbookschool.com. Tomorrow, we are having another workshop. It's all sold out, unfortunately, but it's going to be really fun with August Wren Gouache Portrait Workshop. Really looking forward to that. So... Hopefully you will be um, how do you handle wrinkles, asked Fran. I use a good moisturizer, and I get uh, regular um, injections in my forehead. Helps me to smooth them out. Um, yes, yeah, so so yes, yeah, so we have the gouache workshop. We'll also be announcing our next workshop. So hopefully you'll be joining me and. Uh, Jennifer Orkin Lewis, a.k.a. August Wren, tomorrow. Um, And then we will be announcing the next one, which I'm really looking forward to as well. But anyway.
enough about that. Thanks for joining me. Have a great weekend. Make it a weekend. Look after yourself. Be safe. Feel good. Uh, Try not to torture yourself or others. And uh, keep drawing, 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 drawing. It is the best medicine for hard times. Thank you, and uh, see you next time.